from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for consideration this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 2, beginning with the ninth verse. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God we might, he might taste death for everyone. And bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest, in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He's able to help those who are being tempted. Here ends the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome home. Does this place feel like home to you? For some of you, you might be saying, well, yes, this feels like home. It feels comfortable. This is where I get to see my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a warm and inviting place. In fact, when I walked in this morning, I had to run through the gauntlet and only got through with six hugs on the way in. So yes, this feels very much like home. But there might be someone here who says, you know what? This doesn't feel like home to me. Feels a little uncomfortable. I feel like a stranger here. I sometimes feel like nobody knows I'm here or nobody would notice if I wasn't here. So maybe this doesn't feel so homely and comforting and warm as I might like. You know, I've been there though, too. Walked into a church before and wondered to myself, if I wasn't here, would anybody even notice? Would I be even missed if I wasn't in that church this morning? The problem is sometimes we get the wrong perspective on things. We don't look at things the way that others look at it, and sometimes we miss what is actually being offered. Because when we are coming together in a church such as this, God says it's meant to be like a home for you. And when one of God's family is missing, when one of God's family feels alienated, Something's just not right. And so this morning as we study God's word together, we want to look at what God has given to us as a church. As at this place and really throughout the world with our fellow Christians. He wants us to feel at home and he wants us to be here. And so let me say once again, welcome home. Why is this to be a home for you? Well, because this is where your brother promises to be. And this is where your brothers and sisters in Christ are. Now let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 2 for today. And as, as you listen again to the verse, one of the verses that begins this, this lesson for us, something's going to jump out. It says, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Did you catch it? Jesus himself. Jesus, the God of the universe, says, I am your brother. I'm part of the same family as you. 
And before you pass over that quickly and say, okay, so what? You have to consider the enormity of that statement. And to do that, if you, if you would flip back in your Bible sometime to Hebrews chapter 1, you get a glimpse of it. Because there we see that Jesus is the exact representation of God. He's true God from eternity. He's the one that poured the world's foundations. He's the one that God said all the angels of the world are to worship him. He's the creator of this entire world. And so as we think about that, we see that the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-ruling Lord of the universe says, these people are my brother and sister. He says to you, you are my sister. You are my brother. Because we're part of the same family. But you know how families go, don't you? There's always one. There's always one who is a little bit brash. The one whose mouth says things before his mind can catch up to say, is it appropriate what I'm saying? There's always one who embarrasses the family for all the wrong reasons. And yet, you think about families. You can choose your friends. You can't choose your family. But did you notice what just happened in our verses? Jesus, true God, the Lord of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, says, I chose you. Even though you are the epitome of embarrassment, even though I'm that, he says, I choose you to be my brothers and sisters. Because I want to be part of that same family. I think about what Jesus did for his family. You might say Jesus went dumpster diving for his family. Think about that. Jesus, who is part of the pristine family, the triune family, who lived in perfection in heaven for all eternity, chose to leave that, to go dumpster diving in the rubbish and the filth of this world to find you and me. And it wasn't just for a little time. Jesus went there for 33 years. That had to be a sort of mind-numbing experience, don't you think? To be surrounded all the time by people who were disinterested in him people who insulted him, people who sinned against him, people who rebelled against him, and yet he said, these are the people I'm choosing to spend my time with. These are the people I'm choosing to call my brothers and sisters in Christ, because these are the people I want. And listen to again what he did. He came to suffer death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone, and to bring many sons and daughters to glory. He lived to do what we couldn't do. He died to win the forgiveness that you and I need because of the times that we insult him and reject him and disappoint him. There's a story about the actor Kevin Bacon. You might have seen one or 75 of his movies. And he tells a story about when his young son saw his 1984 hit movie Footloose for the first time. And his son gets done watching the movie and says, Dad, you know, that was just awesome. To see you just flying around and dancing and doing all those, those tricks, that was just awesome. And Evan Bacon looked at his son and said, you know, son, that wasn't me. That was the stuntman. The son asked, well, what's the stunt name? Well, this is a guy that dresses in my clothes and do, does the things I can't do. He said, okay. Well, that part where you were twirling around on that bar and you landed on your feet, that was, that was incredible. Yes, son, that wasn't me. That was the gymnastics double who dressed like me to do the things I couldn't do. And so his son, a little disappointed, said to his father, well, Dad, then what did you do for the movie? He said, I got all the glory. And that's really you and me, isn't it? Jesus came to this world not to be our stunt double, but to be our Savior. To do all the things we can't do, so that we can have it more. Listen again to our lesson. It was fitting 
that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Now, there's a word in there that might throw us a little bit off. Jesus didn't have to become perfect. He was that way from eternity. The Greek word there has this idea of bringing to completion. And so, Jesus, who is this pioneer, the first one to do it, the only one to do it, took our salvation and brought it to completion so that he can give us the glory. He did it so that he could do everything for us because he said, you people are incapable of it. Think about what we confessed earlier. All of our thoughts, all of our words, all of our actions, all of these things that we do that insult God, that fall short of his demands. He said, well, Jesus didn't do that. He met those demands. And now he gives us the glory. Even to the point where he says, you know what, these people who by all rights should be the black sheep of the family, these people, he was proud to call his own. Even though he would have had every right to disown us, to have nothing to do with us, he comes and says, I want to call these people my very own. Think about a family member you might have. Those family members we boast about. Let me tell you about my brother who's in the military and how proud I am of him. Let me tell you about this family member of mine who's made it to the top of the sports world. Let me tell you about my family member who's an accomplished musician. We like to boast about our family. And now this is what Jesus does. You know who's my family? He says, that one, and that one, and that one. These are my brothers and my sisters. These are the ones that I bring glory to. You know, you think about why we're here this morning. It's really kind of for a family reunion, isn't it? Listen to what, Jesus, what we hear in our lesson. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. We come here to meet with our brother Jesus and to worship. And here's kind of the mind-blowing thing about this whole thing of worship. Because we come here to sing Jesus' praises. We come here to worship our Heavenly Father. And Jesus says, yeah, I'm going to get in on that action. While we're praising our Savior together, he says, I'm going to bring honor and glory to my Father in heaven as well. I want to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ so that I can sing praises with them together. That's what we have going on for us today. We come here for this family reunion to be together with our brothers and sisters to worship our God together. And Jesus is here with us. He says because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. It would be one thing to say, well, we're here simply to worship God. But you're here for another reason, I think, as well. You're here to be filled. You ever go visit Grandma? you got to go to Grandma's house on an empty stomach, don't you? Because Grandma says, I'm going to make sure you're filled to the gills before you leave this place. And Jesus says to each and every one of us, I'm going to make sure you're filled. I'm going to give you the comfort of knowing that you don't have to fear death because I've conquered death through my resurrection. I'm going to give you the comfort that you don't have to fear temptation because I've gone through exactly what you go through, but I conquered it. He tells us, I'm going to fill you up with my love. I'm going to strengthen you as you have your brothers and sisters in Christ here to help you along the way and to carry you when you are down. So yeah, we come here to worship our Savior, but we don't go away simply expending all of our energy worshiping Him. We go away filled up with what He has given us. He has made us part of His family. You know, if you've been raised in a loving Home and a loving family. It brings back fond memories, doesn't it? Maybe your mind goes to coming home from school, the smell of chocolate chip cookies filling the air, and so you walk in and mom has a glass of milk waiting for you. Or maybe you, your mind, as you're a little bit older, you go back and you go, do you remember sitting around just having game night? We spent no money, but we were poor, so we just had games together. Remember all the chips that were in the, in the kitchen table? 
The ones that you became so familiar with because you sat around that kitchen table simply being a family. Well, those thoughts bring warm and welcoming feelings to us. But you know what? There are those who might look back at childhood and go, it wasn't that kind of place. It was a sad time. It was a lonely time. It was a loveless time. Well, God says it's the same way for Christians. He wants us to think about our place in His house as a warm and welcoming place. He wants us to have fond memories as we join together and worship with one another because this is where we meet our brother Jesus. This is where we connect with one another. And yeah, admittedly, there might be those times where we've gone to church and we felt all alone. I think some of that can be a cultural thing, can it? You think about the world we live in, and we've kind of been pushed to be isolationists. Think about when you leave your house. Click at the garage door, it goes open and you leave. Click at the garage door and you return nice and safe in your castle, nice and safe in your cocoon, and we often don't know our neighbors. Well, sometimes we transfer that to the church, and we don't get practice and get to know one another. But you know, there's sometimes we're, we're at fault here too. Someone walks into our church, and we haven't done well. We've given them the cold shoulder. We're so busy on a Sunday morning that we don't take the time and opportunity to welcome somebody. He says, that should be. That, that's why a Sunday like Welcome Home Sunday is so important. Because here's a Sunday that we can repent to those times where we've been too busy to notice others. When we're too busy serving ourselves in order to serve someone else. When we haven't taken the time to get to know someone or to even acknowledge them. And you know what? Jesus offers us that forgiveness. He came to be that high priest, to make that atoning sacrifice, so that God looks at us and says, that doesn't stand against you anymore. But you are my brothers and sisters who stand clean and pure and part of my family. So that now it can be just like I greeted you this morning when I said, brothers and sisters in Christ, because that's what he's made us. So now that changes my attitude and I can ask that question, who is it here that needs my help? Who is it that is hurting that I can speak a word of kindness to? Who is it that I can support? Because these are the people that God has brought into my life and that I can express that Christian love that he has shown to me. You see, God has brought you into this house for a reason. Be brothers and sisters in Christ. I want you to think back to that first lesson we had this morning. And you see the close connection we have. There we see from Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You see, we're not just brothers and sisters in Christ connected to one another. There's that third strand that connects us all. It's our Savior Jesus. He's the one who connects us to one another and brings us into his family to make us his own. So that when we are going through difficult times, when we are facing temptation, when we are facing trial and heartache and strife, we have those brothers and sisters in Christ who won't abandon us, but are with us. You see, God has not designed us to be alone. He's designed us to be a part of a family. And that's really what we have here as brothers and sister, sisters in Christ. You have something special. Something that drives you to do something that's kind of crazy by world standards. When I was in Europe, there was a family that would wait for me to fly from Germany to England, and then they would take a six-hour train ride one way down, stay overnight, for one purpose alone. To be with their brother, their Savior, and to be with the brothers and sisters in Christ. 
because they recognize this is such an important fellowship that we have, an important connection we have. Think about the opportunities that you have to be with your brother and your brothers and sisters in Christ. You have that right here. Take advantage of it. Long for the time that you'll join each other once again. I'll be with you and your family. Amen. Be safe. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. This time we will gather our